In today's video, I will be showing you how I replaced the back glass on the iPhone X. This is a, the phone that Zach from Jerry Rig Everything broke in one of his previous videos, and he was going to fix it, but didn't, so I'm gonna give it a try. But I have never dropped these two phones, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Plus, I'll be attempting my own back glass repairs on these broken phones, because they're so expensive to replace. With the iPhone X, it's $549 to replace the back glass. And the back is now just shattered everywhere. I did find a few methods that work for removing the back glass on an iPhone 8 and an 8 Plus. If you remember from the beginning of this video, I have one more cracked iPhone 10, which might be fun to try with dry ice. It's about half as cold as liquid nitrogen, but a little bit easier to obtain. That sounds like fun. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Now one of the things that you'll notice when you watch uh, Zach's videos, because if you haven't you should already, uh, you should go and watch them, is that he does the, uh, the backlash repairs without uh, removing any of the internals. I on the other hand, uh, I guess I don't trust myself that much. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick teardown of the entire uh, internals so that I can do, uh, do the, ba the backlash repair without worrying about potentially damaging the battery, the cameras, the screen, a bunch of different things that the temperature may have an effect on either now or the future. After removing the screws in the bracket um, and getting all the screws off the logic board, uh, one of the things that I, I like to do is take out the battery and I do that using a little bit of alcohol. Next, we'll go ahead and remove all the screws that house the Taptic engine, the, la the loudspeaker, uh, and the charge port section. Pull out the bracket that's covering up all of that. Pull out the loudspeaker. Remove the Taptic engine there, and go ahead and pull the last three tabs, and then the battery should just come right out. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the uh, uh, the flex cables for the uh, camera, for the Face ID. The logic board will pull out, and then we'll go ahead and remove all the internals that we can from the device. Removing all the screws, keeping everything in order. Everything uh, has to be kept in perfect order because there isn't a single screw that really is the exact same as another. Everything has to uh, be well organized. And all these little flex cables as well are super sensitive, so I use alcohol on, on them to help loosen up the adhesive to make it easier for me to remove them, uh, therefore, easier to install later. Carefully removing the external charging unit. I do like that feature. I want to maintain it in the end. Now that we've gotten it all apart, let's go ahead and organize ourselves by cleaning up the workspace a little bit so that we'll have some room to uh, work with some dry ice. Now dry ice is uh, pretty uh, pretty cold stuff. I wouldn't suggest uh, handling it with your hands. I would suggest using some gloves. And even then, I wouldn't handle the, uh, the dry ice very long with the gloves because it will end up freezing in the gloves and then it'll get to your fingers. It definitely makes a weird noise when you place it on the dry ice to begin with. After a couple minutes, you'll notice it starts to turn frosty white, basically bringing it down to the, the coldest temperature that it can get. And then I will take my thin pry tool 
and uh, get under there, get under the metal frame in between the frame and the glass, and hopefully the glass will just simply crack away. I was curious to see what alcohol would do on there, so I put a drop of alcohol on the back of the glass, and it simply just slowed the evaporation process. It almost made the alcohol a little bit, um, not necessarily frozen, but um, it was pretty cool to see. Working my pry tool around the glass, it was it was fairly uh, sturdy, and there wasn't much give to it. But it was kind of doing the, the trick. I was hoping that in flexing the frame I could get it to crack the adhesive, but that didn't work. Moving the pry tool around did, however, seem to loosen up the glass here and there. But there were some places where the adhesive was just too strong for the, uh, for the pry tool to, to get in between. And the adhesive hadn't yet... Uh, lost its, its grip due to the cold temperatures of the dry ice. Now I sat in certain areas for many minutes hoping that they would loosen up with the uh, uh, with all of the uh, with the cold temperatures but the around the edges especially um, I guess they use a different uh, different glue around the edge because they were not giving uh, giving up whatsoever. I dug a little hole here in the dry ice to allow the uh, the camera to sit in there so that I could have better contact with the glass against the uh, the dry ice all the way around the camera. Trying to press it in there. And it helped, but it, it got to the point where uh, no matter how cold I got it in certain sections, it just wouldn't release. Now at this point I've been uh, probably going at the back glass for I'd say 20-25 minutes even though it's sped up trying to see if I can uh, get the back glass off and in uh, some of my previous videos if you've watched them where I replaced the back glass on the iPhone 8 or 8 plus I'm um, soon to do a video on the XR uh, the back glass goes a lot faster using a heat plate and uh, although this has been fun and educational it uh it's tedious and i'm scratching up the frame a lot more than normal and bending the frame in, in ways that i don't like uh basically it's kind of becoming a, a little bit more uh than i wanted it to unfortunately it's still fun to play with dry ice let's let it thaw out a little bit and then we'll just transition all the way over to uh, to my friend, the heat plate here. That'll help us to uh, to remove the back glass a little bit better. The hammer that my uh, my wife and kids got me for Father's Day. I found with one solid hit in the right spot on the the rear camera, it pops it out perfectly without damaging the lens unless it's already cracked there you can see there pulls away perfectly and you can see on the inside of the frame still intact un untouched basically now we'll stick it on my heat plate the temperature on this is set to uh, a scolding 250 uh, degrees celsius super super hot and uh, before with the dry ice I was having to actually really scrape at the uh, at the glass and I'm using a very light um, a light touch with uh, with this pry tool I barely only have to hold on to it with one or two fingers like it's that that easy to slide under the glass with the heat at this temperature big difference big contrast between 
using the uh, dry ice temperature and the uh, and the heat. I'd recommend to go and watch uh, Zach's video uh, on Jerry Rig Everything because they uh, do uh, pour liquid nitrogen um, on the back or they set it in a bowl of liquid nitrogen to remove the glass and that is much colder than dry ice and with that he was successful uh, it did take him some time but he was successful to remove all the back glass so uh, if dry ice was a little bit colder uh, um, you know actually double double the temperature um, then it probably would have been perfectly fine um, in removing the the back glass um, entirely or maybe just my patience wasn't enough and if I had sat there for another hour or so, maybe I would have been able to pick all the way, pick the glass all the way. But at the same time, damaging the frame in the way I was doing, I, I just wasn't satisfied with the way the repair was going. And I'd like for this to be a working phone when I'm done. Now that I've scraped off all the last bits of glass and adhesive, we can go ahead and brush that off a little bit and uh, start re-adhering the, uh, the glass. I'll clean up my workspace with all of the uh, remain uh, the evidence of, of broken glass and adhesive. There's the uh, rubber gasket that goes around the rear camera that, that fell off. Next we're going to use some adhesive. This is E8000. It's a, a very um, a good adhesive that I find. Uh, it creates a nice seal. It's clear and uh, um, has a fine tip which allows me to basically pipe the adhesive, um, the glue into areas that are really tight that I need them to be like for example around the edge. And then basically I'm going to follow what Apple's done and just basically put glue um, everywhere. And then we'll go ahead and uh, Stick the new back glass on and uh, clamp it down. Do you think I used enough clamps? I don't know. We'll stick the gasket back on the uh, the rear camera and after a few minutes we'll remove the clamps clean up the uh, the back glass if we've gotten any uh, residue any adhesive around it then I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a bead of of the adhesive around where the camera lens is going to go and we'll go ahead and install that on there and push it down. And there it is, a new back glass installed on the iPhone X. I will be linking Zach's uh, videos uh, from his channel, Jerry Rig Everything, in the description below. So check them out.